Good day, everyone. I'm here to present my synthesis for 15 minutes, uh, titled A Synthesis of Philosophies of Nursing Within Nursing Related Philippine Medical Legal Jurisprudence. I'm Attorney John Igor T. Galinato from MSU IIT College of Nursing. Okay, we have patient advocacy in COVID pandemic. In There is a palpable overlap between the professions of nursing and law. In 1980, the American Nurses Association, uh, ANA, defined nursing as a diagnosis and treatment of human responses to actual or potential health problems. But in 2003, ANA defined nursing anew as the protection, promotion, and optimization of health and abilities, prevention of illness and injury, alleviation of suffering through the diagnosis and treatment of human response, and advocacy in the care of individuals families, communities, and uh, populations. In the realm of philosophies of, nurse, of science in nursing, some authors assert that a unitary transformative perspective, one, one which deals with the understanding of the synchrony and mutuality of nurse-client encounters that transcend the time and space limitations of present situation, is essential for the full explication of the nursing discipline, nursing knowledge, and caring in the human health uh, experience, according to Newman et al., 1991. In a similar trend, some authors assert the simultaneity paradigm in the discourse of nursing theory, where the basic beliefs are that the human being is more than and different from the sum of its parts, and is rather an open being in mutual process with the universe who participates in creating health through personal knowledge and choices based on personal values. The goals of nursing in the simultaneity paradigm is oriented toward quality of life and evolving patterns of living for the person and family. Ibid at page 145. Thus, the latest nursing definition and trend in philosophies of nursing appear to reflect the ideal that nurses are to take a more proactive role in safeguarding their patients' welfare a task that requires more than a cursory knowledge of pertinent nursing laws and jurisprudence. This is so because in philosophy of science, particularly in philosophical hermeneutics, Hans George Gadamer proffers the importance of jurisprudence as the positive evaluation of the role of authority and tradition as legitimate sources of knowledge. So, with the aim of helping fellow nurses in the Philippines provide better and legally sound nursing care, this paper will present and analyze the controlling doctrines in nursing-related Philippine medical legal jurisprudence and look for the philosophies of science within them. Let's we'll start off with the Socratic method, application in the interpolation of witnesses and the IDAO uh, principle. The first uh, literature we review is the literature of Ramos et al. versus the Court of Appeals. In this case, the Socratic method was used by the Supreme Court in the method of instruction found in most, most modern law schools. In courts, the Socratic method is used as a form of inquiry and debate between individuals with opposing viewpoints based on asking and answering questions to simulate, stimulate critical thinking and to illuminate ideas. This is a case where the surgeon's uh, lateness uh, caused the patient's death, among others. A, what happened is that in this case was that the surgeon, Dr. Osaka, was three hours late for the cholecystectomy operation, causing patient Erlinda Ramos to be anxious, affecting the administration of anesthesia on her as the outpouring of adrenaline resulting in high blood pressure and disturbance in heart rhythm contributed to the patient's death. The interpolation by the Chief Justice of the expert witness, Dr. Kamagai, reveals the use of the uh, Socratic method. Chief Justice said, in other words, due diligence would require a surgeon to come on time. Dr. Kamagai, I think it is not even due diligence, it is courtesy. Chief Justice said, courtesy. Dr. Kamagai, and care. Just Chief Justice said, duty as a matter of fact. Dr. Kamagai said, yes, Your Honor. In this case, it's established that uh, the physician uh, in this case, the physician was late because he was operating on another patient from another hospital. In the said case, the High Court ruled that Dr. Hosaka's irresponsible conduct of arriving late 
uh, of arriving late for the scheduled operation of petitioner Erlinda is violative not only of his duty as a physician to serve the interest of his patient with the greatest solicitude, giving them always his best talent and skill, but also of Article 19 of the Civil Code, which requires a person in the performance of his duties to act with justice and give everyone his due. The ideal relation to govern the relation between the physician and the patient, as well as nurse and patient. According to Martin Buber, the proponent of the IDAO method, an IDAO relation obtains in encounters between subjects that exceed a range of Cartesian subject-object relation, a concrete encounter because the parties meet one another in their authentic existence without any qualification or objectification of one another, unlike that which exists in an I-8 relationship. So in short, an IDAO relationship, you uh, wholly respect the patient and uh, among other things, respect the rights and uh, that includes arriving on time. Now let's proceed to the use of uh, philosophical empiricism and rationalism, the doctrine of res ipsa lucitor, the, the thing speaks for uh, itself, of evidence. Uh, it is used to establish prima facie negligence in civil cases when there is no direct evidence. Empiricism is sense experience, uh, advocates that sense experience is the ultimate source of all our concepts and knowledge, and rationalism is the belief that all things are knowable by deductive reasoning. Res ipsa lucitor, as I've explained, is a rule of evidence to establish prima facie evidence of uh, negligence. In this case, Dr. Batikin left behind a piece of rubber glove uh, which caused the infection of both the ovaries uh, of the patient. Now, there is no direct evidence in this case because the piece of rubber glove that was left behind was uh, misplaced by the doctor, another doctor who removed it. Uh, the doctor said that she had mailed it to a pathologist but uh, probably it was lost. Although there is no direct evidence, the, uh, the circumstantial evidence points to Dr. Batikin's liability. Number one, the surgical glove was well within her control. And number, number two, the injury would not have occurred unless someone made a mistake. And number three, the patient could not have contributed to her own injury because the patient was unconscious during the uh, operation. Where the thing which caused the injury is shown to be under the management of the defendant and the accident is such as in the ordinary course of things does not happen in those who have the management use proper care, it affords reasonable evidence in the absence of an explanation by the defendant that the accident arose from want of care. So, so that's it. Uh, this uh, ipsa locator was utilized. Next off, we have the concept of phen phenomenology and how uh, this philosophical uh, principle uh, in philosophy of nursing advocates uh, the use of expert witness when it comes to civil cases against physicians and ordinary witness when it comes to civil cases against nurses. Phenol phenomenology studies the structures of experience or consciousness. It studies consciousness experience as experienced from the subjective or first person point of view. It acknowledges that things may appear differently to people with different experience. That is the reason why uh, when there is a civil case uh, against a doctor, uh, medical malpractice, usually an expert witness is required because uh, uh, their practice is governed by special skills which an ordinary layman uh, may not be familiar with. Hence, a surgeon is judged by the standards of a surgeon and uh, however, a nurse can be judged by the standards of a layman. So that's it. Edmund Husserl, the principal founder of phenomenology, also advocated the use of epoche or local epoche, a technique used to bracket existing assumptions. The case which, uh, in which local epoche was well used is the case of Dr. Cruz versus O'Malley in 1997. What happened is, in this case, the, in the middle of the surgery, uh, the surgeon ran out of uh, supplies, okay? He went out the operating room and ordered the relatives to buy oxygen tank, uh, some medications. The patient was transferred to another hospital and the patient died there. 
Now, there was a case for negligence uh, against the doctor, uh, both criminal and civil case. However, the expert witness who was presented uh, was able to prove that the cause of death uh, has nothing to do with those lack of supplies or the unhygienic conditions of the operating room. It was because of a medical condition called the IC, disseminated intravascular uh, coagulation and unpreventable bleeding disorder. The expert witness also testified that there was a uh, uh, there was no untied uh, sutures, okay? So in Dr. Cruz versus Umale, uh, the Supreme Court in this case observed that although to layman, uh, the death of the patient, the bleeding of the patient may be attributed to the untidiness of the operating room or the lack of supplies. In truth and in fact, the expert witness was able to establish that the cause of death has nothing to do with those. The cause of death was in fact caused by an unpreventable medical condition, this disseminated intravascular coagulation. That's it. Next, we have the structure of scientific revolution. In the structure of scientific revolution written by Thomas Kuhn, he wrote that the value placed upon a new phenomenon and thus upon its discoveries varies with our estimate of the extent to which the phenomenon violated paradigm induced anticipation. So, um, professional Services Incorporated, PSI versus Agana. So what happened is that in this case, the surgeon left behind two pieces of gauze, which caused the patient's death. Actually, the nurse noticed, the count nurse noticed that two pieces of gauze were missing. The nurse informed the doctor that there were two pieces of gauze were missing, but the doctor did not listen and continued to close the incision. The nurse being vigilant and accurate noted that in the chart, the nurse started in that uh, notify doctor that two gauzes are missing and then doctor persisted to close the incision. So when the family of the uh, patient, the, by the way, the, the woman here developed a rectovaginal, fist, a rectovaginal fistula. So a canal connected her vagina to her anus and she suffered infection and then ultimately died. A civil case was brought against the doctor and uh, the nurse was acquitted, obviously. The doctor and the hospital were found solidarily liable for $2 million. But through the years, it became $15 million because the Supreme Court uh, was, uh, uh, was uh, angry at the, uh, the hospital for dilly-dallying in the payment of civil liability. So uh, what happened in this case is that the, in this case, the Supreme Court uh, rejected the Schluwendorf doctrine and affirmed the doctrines of respondeat superior, apparent authority, and uh, corporate negligence. Now, in the U.S., there has been a revolutionary change in medical legal liability. They have been starting to adopt the Schluwendorf doctrine. This doctrine stipulates that the hospital is not liable for the mistakes committed by consultants uh, of hospital. But the Supreme Court rejected that. It affirmed the doctrine of respondeat superior. It means that the hospital would have liability uh, for the mistake of uh, consultants, especially when there is apparent authority involved. What happened in this case was that the name of the surgeon was uh, plastered, was shown in the lobby of the hospital. So also when the uh, patient was in, was entered into the operating room, she was not informed that the doctor was just a consultant and not a regular employee. So in short, the hospital is stopped. It cannot take back its representation that the doctor is indeed its employee. So in, in this case, the hospital was held liable uh, for the uh, mistake of its employee. Uh, that's it. And corporate negligence. Uh, the Supreme Court also affirmed here the doctrine of corporate negligence. Uh, the reason for that is the, hosp the hospital was aware that the woman who had missing gauzes uh, left behind in her abdomen uh, reported to the physician that she had uh, abdominal pain. The hospital was also uh, impliedly aware of this because the nurse had charted in the chart two missing gauzes. So since the nurse is an employee of the hospital, whatever the nurse knows, the hospital should also know that. 
And the, the hospital never made any investigation into the event. It never investigated the doctor, the nurses. It did nothing. And uh, because of that, the, host, uh, the Supreme Court was appalled by the uh, callousness of the hospital. So the PSI Professional Services Incorporated was held liable for 15 million pesos at the end of that case. Now, what are the implications of this uh, study? The implication to the nursing profession is that patient advocacy and accurate documentation, uh, especially in times of COVID, uh, in times of medical advancement, uh, nurses today should be more of an advocate and we should have accurate documentation Vigilant assessment and punctuality. Being late, uh, it has been established, could increase the epinephrine level of the client and made them uh, react adversely to medications. The nurse should also employ rationalism, empiricism, and local epoche to eliminate bias in patient care. It could also, uh, this medical jurisprudence could also help with theory development. So that may be, uh, for example, particularly nurse specializations. And in terms of legality, maybe a move that uh, maybe evidence more than that of a layman could be used in order to judge a nurse uh, by her work. For hospitals, uh, medical legal jurisprudence have an implication to improve nurse-patient ratio, supervision of staff and patients. This is so because it has already been established that the Supreme Court rejected the Slovindorf and affirm the respondent superior. So even if it is your, the doctor is only a consultant, the hospital could still be liable under the doctor of corporate negligence, apparent authority, and respondent superior. So, author, I'm attorney Jenny Gutigalnato from Mindanao State uh, University Legal Institute of Technology College of Nursing.